Good morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd here on this first Sunday in the season of Lent. A couple of notes on the service. One, if you were here on Ash Wednesday, you heard us say that we do things a little bit differently during Lent. Lent, to use some traditional church language, is a penitential season. It's a season of 40 days that leads us to Easter, 40 days not counting Sundays. And it's a season in which we become particularly self-reflective, that is, looking at ourselves individually and corporately, and sort of wondering aloud in a spiritual way, what is it that lies between ourselves and God who's pouring us into existence moment by moment? We seek during Lent to take down the obstacles in life that are preventing us from being as loving as we might. We also change the worship space just a little bit. We don't have a lot of sort of colorful ornaments other than the stained glass windows in the worship space here at Good Shepherd, but we have a few. You'll note that the flags are not in the space. You'll note that our Good Shepherd banner, which usually hangs over here, is not in the space. You'll also note that the baptismal font is closed for in, during Lent, a season in which we prepare for baptism at Easter, but not yet, not yet. Another sort of fun, I think, and playful thing we do during Lent is we try our level best to fast from the word Alleluia. So where we usually say Alleluia in the liturgy, we don't during Lent. Does that make sense? So you'll note that there's a bunch of times where we're used to saying Alleluia and we're used to shouting it out because we're joyful Christians. And so you'll catch yourself, say half of it, and then repent of it. The one thing you're not allowed to do is to judge your neighbor for accidentally saying hallelujah during Lent. Jesus won't let us judge. Does that make sense? Yeah. We also wear purple. Purple is a traditional color for penitence and reflection. You'll note that the music during the season of Lent is reflective of the themes and is always tied to the scripture that's appointed for the day. This is the first Sunday in the season of Lent a day on which it is tradition to begin the service with the Great Litany. Hmm? So this is a pretty different way to begin. The Great Litany, if you'll turn in your prayer books, is on page 148 in your books of common prayer. And at this service, Dr. Middleton and the choir are going to lead us in chanting the Great Litany. Dr. Middleton is going to be our cantor, and she will cant the vast majority of the words. All of our responses are in italics. And you're thinking, I don't have the music, I don't have the music. You have better, you have the choir. So the choir is gonna lead the responses, and for most of the responses, you can listen to them the first time and then follow along in the subsequent times. Does that, does that sort of make sense? You can do it. The choir is here to shepherd and guide us. The Great Litany is a marvelous, old, old tradition of our church, and traditions keep going because we keep them going. So I'm really grateful to all of you for helping us keep the tradition of chanting the Great Litany on the first Sunday in Lent just by being here. So what we'll do is this. I'm going to go after the prayer for peace to the back of the room, and we're going to process in, and I'll invite you to stand. You'll then open your prayer books to page 148, and Dr. Middleton and the choir will lead us. You'll notice a little difference in the, in the service. The Great Litany contains the prayers of the people and the confession. So when we get to those usual spots, we haven't forgotten, we've just already done them. I've invited the parish as a whole to a parish practice for the season of Lent, and that practice is to begin every meeting of the church, including worship, with a prayer for peace with our siblings in Russia and the Ukraine and our minds and on our hearts and the war that rages, that Russia is raging upon our siblings in the Ukraine. So we pray for peace to begin everything. One final note, then I'll stop. Because of the position of the great litany in the service today, after the prayer for peace, I'm going to invite any children who so desire to go to children's chapel before we begin the litany. So I'll hold just a little bit of space and Miss Patty and and her friends will lead our children out. Does that sound good? So a prayer for peace. Hmm. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. At this time, any children in our midst who wish to go to Children's Chapel can come forward. And if you'll come forward to here, I'll offer a prayer for you all, too, as you go. All right. Look at this crowd, Miss Patty. Good grief. And they keep coming. All right. I'm going to offer a prayer and God's blessing upon you, and then we'll see you in just a little bit, okay? Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of these, your children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Now, congregation, turn to page 148. The instruction for the litany is to stand during the procession and then either stand or kneel, as is best for you when the procession ends. So please stand as you're able. O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from the hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. By thy mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, 
by the glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of our death, and in the day of judgment, we sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge of understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. That it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. That it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. That it may please thee to give all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee and diligently to live after thy commandments. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in all time we may enjoy them. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants and for the common good. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in, children, in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all humankind. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligence, and, ig and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. That it 
it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanders, and to do turn their hearts. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. That it may please thee to grant to all faithful departed eternal life and peace. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of all the saints we may attain to the heavenly kingdom. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. of God that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Christ, hear us. Have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The psalm for today can be found on page 719 in your Book of Common Prayer. We will read Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2, and 9 through 16 in unison. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall be no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth 
and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of, of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I really like being alive. Do you? Do you? Oh my gosh! I really like being alive. I like everything about it. I like people. I like you all. I like sunshine, like yesterday. I even like rain, like today. Oh, I like being alive. I like walking my dog. She's a golden retriever. Her name is Belle because she's beautiful. I like that too. I like being alive. I like chocolate chip cookies. I'm addicted to chocolate chip cookies. Good thing I like them. I like laughing with my daughters. I really like reading. I've liked reading since I was a little boy. I like dating my wife. I like talking to you all about Jesus. I like the angel choir. I even like chanting the great litany. I like being alive. Do, do you? I hope you
hope so. What I'm aware of is this. Hmm? No, I'm aware of this. The reason I'm talking like this is because what I'm aware of is that in the history of the known universe, being a human being and being conscious enough to enjoy being alive is a very recent and a very rare gift. Do you know what I mean by that? Can I tell you? So God started pouring the universe into existence 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang. Now that is literally an unimaginably long time ago. You cannot imagine, you cannot conceive of 13.8 billion years. Did you know that the Earth was born 4.5 billion years ago? Again, you can't imagine that. 4.5 billion years ago, you can't conceive of that. I like being alive, and I love the idea that I'm situated, that we're all situated, our lives, in this huge framework of God's magnificent creation. Did you know that 1.8 billion years ago, the Earth was teeming with communities, not of human beings, not even close, Rather, teeming with communities of bacteria. But there was nothing much going on. Archaeologists call the billion-year period that kicked off then, so 1.8 billion years ago, the boring billion. Because nothing much happened. Through my little theological, churchy lens, I think God must have been doing one heck of a centering prayer set. One billion years of nothing. Did you know that 530 million years ago, can you conceive of that 530 million years ago? No, you cannot. <laughs> 530 million years ago, the Cambrian explosion, how cool is that, introduced most of the major animal groups that we know, like their ancestors, to our planet. Did you know that 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs went extinct? Only after roaming the earth for 165 million years. All of these numbers, huh? Totally incomprehensible. Incompre you can't imagine 65 million years ago. I like being alive, and I really like the fact that my liveliness, and yours too, is situated in this huge frame. God has been at work for an awful long time. So let's jump forward. Can y'all can y'all make the jump from 65 million years ago to 300,000 years ago? You can do it. 300,000 years ago. Homo sapiens, our ancestors, appear on planet Earth for the first time. I mean, talk about Johnny and Jane come lately. 300,000 years versus 13.8 billion? We're babies. Another jump, smaller jump, 200,000 years. 100,000 years ago is a pretty good guess. huh? And when human beings evolved into creatures who were conscious of self. Does that make sense? So 100,000 years ago, give or take, our ancestors looked into the mirror that was the pool of water outside the cave or whatever where they lived. They saw an image of self and realized that they were other than the creation around them. They had the capacity for self-reflective consciousness. Does that make sense? How cool is that? Y'all, that was 100,000 years ago. In the grand scheme of the history of the known universe, that was like, like, like 60 seconds ago. So check this out. 6,000 years ago. You know what happened 6,000 years ago? The first civilizations of human beings, our ancestors, began to form. 6,000 years? That's nothing. You know what happened 4,000 years ago? 
I mean, a just lazy sort of short trip back 4,000 years ago finds the events that are recorded in the Old Testament. Does that make sense? Happening. 4,000 years ago. You know what happened 2,000 years ago? Everybody can answer this one, right? 2,000 years ago, my man Jesus is born a baby in Bethlehem. He ain't nothing on the scene. 14, 13.8 billion years? He comes along 2,000 years ago? One more jump. You ready? Are we okay? Are we together? Everyone in this room was born in the last 100 years. Am I right? Seeing no hands. <laughs> Everyone in this room was born within the last 100 years. I guess the 13.8 billion year history of the known universe. Everybody in this room is born in the last hundred years. Can you see it? To be alive in this moment and conscious of it is unequivocally the most rare and amazing feat of the known universe. I mean, does that not get you hyped up? Like, to be alive right this second is a high-octane gift. It is a miracle that we are here. And let me, let me just put it in some concrete terms for you. In the 13.8 billion year history of the known universe, you have only been able to fly in a jet plane for about 80 years. I'm going to get on a jet plane with my family to go somewhere in a few weeks for spring break like it ain't nothing. And I'm betting in your own way you're going to do the same. Some of you maybe today. And you've only been able to do that for 80 years, give or take, to be alive in this moment. Somebody say amen. It's the most awe-inspiring miracle. We should all walk around all day long with our jaws on the floor. You should not be able to get anything done on your to-do list because you're just so amazed and awestruck that you are alive. Oh my God. So the universe is 13.8 billion years old. And the average human being in our country, huh? You know this? Lives for how long? 77 years and some change? Life is a quick trip through the cosmos, isn't it? 77 years average lifespan. My people die young, so I probably don't have that long. If you're 78, 79, 80, 85, like you are amazing. You beat the odds in a country that has 300 million people in it. And here's the deal. Somebody said, what is he doing? That's what they're going to put on my tombstone, by the way. Like, what is he doing? What am I doing? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. We can, be ever, we, can, we can either be afraid of all that. It's so big. Life is so, so short. We can either be afraid of all of that. Or we can smile. Huh? And dive into it. Dive into this short, high-octane, precious gift of a life and get the most of it because enjoying life is worth it. You know how long Jesus lived? My man lived 33 years. 33 years! I'm 46! I've got him beat by, what, 13 years? Jesus lived 33 years. And when he was about 30 years old, huh? the devil dragged him out to the desert. That's the scene we got right here in the gospel this morning. You all know it. The devil dragged him when he was about 30 years old out into the desert. And the devil said, okay, my man you got a few years left to live. And I'm going to present you, said the devil to Jesus, with the opportunity of a lifetime. And you all know the story. Well, you just heard it. You know the story of the three temptations. And what I'll tell you is that each of the three temptations is grounded in fear of some kind of scarcity. Does that make sense? Scarcity of power. Scarcity about resources, scarcity of esteem. What will they think of me? And to each of the three temptations, which was a fear-based temptation, unequivocally, Jesus said, no, no, no. Huh? I will not be driven by fear. 
Jesus said, life is the most amazing gift. And the only way to live in a manner that honors the gift is to banish fear. Stop it. And to love whatever's right in front of me, said Jesus to the devil. And then Jesus went on to do just that. A man had three years, y'all. He went on to do just that. He went on to make the love ethic central to his way of life, and by extension, all of ours. And so the temptation scene is perfectly placed here at the start of Lent, as if to say, it's time to stop being afraid. As if to say, don't make decisions based on fear. Don't decide to do something or not do something because you're afraid. Decide to do it because it's worth it. Decide not to do it because deciding not to do it makes life worth it. Because life, y'all come on. Are y'all with me? Life is the most amazing, rare gift. 13.8 billion years and we're here, able to talk about it. Life is the most amazing thing. And trying to be loving in every moment of this amazing gift of life is so worth it. That's why I say, is this my testimony? I think this might be my testimony. That's why I say I really like being alive. And I'm addicted to looking for meaning in life. Because I believe, and I think this is the heart of our Christian faith, I believe that God has buried meaning all over life. And when I'm afraid, Everybody, anybody ever get afraid? When I'm afraid, I can't see it. Somebody said, there's meaning everywhere. I said, I'm afraid, I can't see it. But when I'm unguarded and saying no, no, no to the devil's temptation to use fear as my fuel, baby, I can see meaning everywhere. I can see love everywhere I go. Tiny example. Hmm? On Ash Wednesday, which was just a few days ago, right? My 11-year-old little girl, Mary, came to me. She said, Dad, I got something to tell you. I said, Dad, serious. I said, yeah. It's Ash Wednesday. Let's be serious. What do you have to tell me? She said, Dad, I'm not going to Ash Wednesday service with you and Mom and Gracie tonight at the Good Shepherd Church. That's what she said to me. I said, what? Yes, you are. You're definitely going. That is our tradition. You're going to Ash Wednesday service. There's no question about it. There's no exceptions. You're going to Ash Wednesday service. When the time comes, you'll get in the car with your mom and your sister. You'll meet me at the church. Ash Wednesday service is what we do. And she looked at me. She said, no, Dad, I'm not. And I said, okay, I'll bite. Little one, why are you not going to Ash Wednesday service? And Mary said, Dad, I go to a Catholic school. I've already been to Ash Wednesday service today. <laughs> That's true. And I said, oh, right, I forgot. And she said, you forgot what? You forgot that I go to a Catholic school? And I said, yes, no, I mean, what are you doing tonight if you're not going to Ash Wednesday service? And she said, well, Kaki and I are going to a peace rally for the Ukraine. We've been texting back and forth, and she's going to pick me up at the house. Well, y'all have Ash Wednesday service. We're going to a peace rally. It's downtown, courthouse steps, Ukraine. I love being alive. I mean, are you serious? I said, oh, <laughs> Well, that's great. <laughs> that's like, well, that's, that's perfect. That's, I'm so glad y'all are doing that, I said, you know. It's like, of course. 
That's a tiny little scene, isn't it? That's, that's, like, that's, like, that's, like, the, that's like the tiniest little story. That's like just like this little, like 13.8 billion years of the history of the known universe. And that moment between father and daughter is a little throwaway thing, isn't it? Like, like doesn't even make the footnotes, or does it? Hmm? Hmm? If life is precious, and every moment is a rare gift, then just the possibility of Ash Wednesday and Lent, the possibility of reflective self-consciousness, the possibility of a peace rally and a civilization that values peace, the possibility of dads and daughters and, and friends like Khaki and, and texting and arranging times for cars to pick up little girls and take them to different places to register their love for the world and, and the Ukraine are brand new spectacular jewels in the crown of creation. Can you feel that? And we ought to be in awe. Y'all, God made this. We ought to be in awe of all of it, all the time, and totally unafraid. Because fear will make us miss it, or worse, misuse it. You see, the deal is this. Brother Vladimir is afraid. He's scared to death. And his fear is manifesting as rage. And rage in the hands of powerful people leads to murder and to war. And I could have been afraid. Different scale, but I could have been afraid that my Mary was missing on our tradition. We're not Roman Catholic, we're Episcopal. Oh, stop it. <laughs> It wasn't me, y'all. By some strange grace, I saw the opportunity that she had before her. And I knew it was worth it. Right? It was worth it. Whatever you do, whatever you aim to do, don't aim at it because you're afraid. Aim at it because it's worth it. Life is for love. Amen? And love is always worth it. Amen. Standing, please turn to page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer as we renew our statement of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of Christ. Peace. Peace. Good morning and welcome to worship at the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd. Special welcome to any newcomers or visitors that we have in the room with us this morning or joining us online. If you are new in our midst, love to have you fill out a connection card. If you're in, in the space with us, these connection cards are in the pew back in front of you. And if you're joining us online, I think Emery's putting a link to the connection card up in the chat as we speak. You can write your name um, contact information on this card and we'll do what is our heart's desire which is connect with you and discover together how you might become a part of this fellowship here at the Church of the Good Shepherd. Folks, um, strike that, young folks, middle school, high school folks, young adults who want to be confirmed or are interested in learning more about confirmation. Confirmation class, classes for young folks start up with Emory Buderbois today, Emory at 3.30. It's not too late to, to sign up if you're middle school, high school, or young adult. With Emory, you can find all the information on our website. We continue to welcome newcomers into our midst. You can find Jose and Stephanie's picture, beautiful as it is, in the back of your bulletin there. We're trying to be a big church that feels like a small church. We are a big church, but we want to operate like a small church, meaning we actually know each other. So Father John has invited us into this rhythm of, with consent, printing the pictures and names of newcomers in our bulletin. So special welcome this morning to Jose and Stephanie. Also want to let you know that we have a few more Lent to Go bags uh, left here on the building. We made 250 of them, and I think we have 10 left maybe. So that means most of you have gotten your Lent to Go bag, but if you haven't, there's a few more left out in the hallway here. They're in our Love is All bags. You can grab one on your way out. Mark Medley, our theologian in residence, his spiritual practice didn't make it into a lot of the bags, so we have that printed and it's separately uh, presented out in the hallway, um, out here by the playground and also by the offices. You can go hunt for that and, and do get it. It's quite good. Add it to your Lent to go bag. I think that's all I have for you. It's our tradition in this place to offer prayers of blessing and thanksgiving upon anyone who is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week. Any birthdays or anniversaries? There we go. Oh, okay. Nice. So Brenda's doing something that reminds me. We have a birthday offering box that is not a mandatory thing, but should you so desire for those of us whose birthday is not today, when it is your birthday or anniversary, you can put a little gift in the birthday offering box. It's just for fun. We are not bringing back indulgences. This is not about paying for <laughs> a blessing. We are definitely Reformation folks, but it's, it's just for fun. It's been a long tradition of this church, and so I want to make you aware of it. So congregation, you have in your prayer book in the back of it there, the birthday anniversary prayer. We'll pray it over these folks saying together, Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. May they increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and neighbors through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good and gracious God, hear your beloved daughters and your beloved son celebrating the anniversaries of their births and their weddings. May the love that has carried them this far in life fill them to overflowing on this day and carry them all the rest of the way on the very wings of your grace. And I ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary.
Most important announcement of the day, everybody in this room is welcome at this table, no exceptions. It is your table, come to your table. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise. Service continues on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we were able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, 
to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he gave thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he gave given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. Then at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
congregation, you have in the back of your prayer books a prayer for the sending forth of Eucharistic visitors. Many of you will remember this from pre-pandemic rhythms, and for some of you it will be new. But we have a communion kit to send out to a member of our congregation who is not able to make it to church. And so we're reintroducing the tradition of sending this out with this prayer. So in the back of your prayer books there, your part is in bold. In the name of this congregation, we send you out bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. Our one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Now you can stand as you're able and turn in your prayer books to page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
one piece to love and serve the Lord.